Welcome back. In this lesson, I'm going to demonstrate how to go about actually logging in to your Figma account and then understanding the overall Sigma functionality and the tool itself. So I'm going to go ahead and simply click on sign in because I already have an account. So I'm going to click on sign in, asks for the email. So enter the email address and of course the password. So once I'm signed in, notice it is a cloud-based tool, right? So I still get my URL and it takes me to my dashboard. I can see various projects that I've been working on, okay? So before I start explaining the actual UI, as a homework, quick, open up a Figma account, right? Sign up and then make sure you end up in this screen. So once I'm logged on to Figma, notice on the left, starting from the top left, I have the three lines, right? This is our menu. So I can create a new file. I can import a file. I can get a desktop app. So this is very helpful. So here you have a platform that you can work directly in your web browser, but you could also download the desktop app. I've already downloaded the desktop app. So as a practice and homework, I'd like you to actually click on this link and follow through the process. And of course, if you have any questions, just post in the discussion area. I'll be more than happy to help. It's a fairly straightforward process. So I'm going to leave that as a homework for you so you can practice downloading the desktop app. And there are, of course, other menu items as well. I'm going to come back to this desktop app after I explain the user interface. I will demonstrate what that looks like. All right. So besides the menu, you have the plus sign, which is a new file, which is a shortcut. Okay. And then, of course, you have the import file. So both of these functionalities are also on the toolbar. On the left navigation pane, I have the search. I can search for any of these projects here. I have the drafts or the deleted files. And once again, the Cladesk team project where we can collaborate with other team members. So if you're working on a project, for example, a design project uh, for an app, you can have multiple team members work on the same project. And the real benefit of Figma is that you can have even developers take a look at the design project as well. So let me go back. So on the left navigation, once again, fairly straightforward, right? So not a whole lot going here. On the center, you have the area where you can actually see all of your projects. For example, if I click on recent, I can click on any of these projects. So if I were to open one just so that you can actually see what it looks like, right, at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the Claydesk project. And it opens up the actual canvas as well. And once you open a certain project or your file, notice the toolbar changes, right? So it appears to have more tools than before. So here I've created two screens already. So you can click on and select each screens and elements on those screens, screen buttons and so on. So starting on the top here on my toolbar, notice the first tool I have is the move tool or the scale tool. And the shortcut on the keyboard is K or V. So depending on once you become comfortable using Figma, you'll most likely use these shortcut keys as well. But for right now, we'll take a look at the move tool and the scale tool, right? Fairly straightforward. Scale means you can scale objects. The next tool is the frame tool and the slice tool. And I'll demonstrate each of these tools in subsequent lectures. But just for right now, we're looking at the objective here is to understand and take a look at the interface as well, what it looks like, what tools are available. So the frame and slice tools are part of this menu. Then we have the rectangle or objects tool. You can draw several objects. You can also import an image or place an image on the screen. Then we have our pen tool or the pencil tool. Of course, our text box is next. And then this is our comments. So you can place comments within your project so that when you collaborate with other team members, they can actually view your comments as well. And in the center, here is the name. You can give it any name, for example. It's called Claydesk here, but you can choose to provide any other name that you wish for this particular project. And of course, the username is here. A couple of usernames because I have the desktop version open. I'm gonna demonstrate that shortly as well. You can share this project. So if I click on share, for example, it brings up a dialog box, fairly straightforward. You can simply invite your team members or you can copy a link, create a link and then email the link as well. So right next to share, I have the 
present. So once you're done with the design, app design interface, you can actually present it. And you can view the settings. And here's your zoom. And this is your export tools as well. So for example, if you want to export this into, let's say, InVision. All right, so this is our toolbar, fairly straightforward. On the right side, notice you have the design, prototype, and code, three various sections or tabs within the right side. The first one is the design tab. So for example, right now, notice one of my screens is selected on the canvas, and it's called iPhone XX. I can change it to different versions of the phone that I'm designing this app for, such as Galaxy 8, iPhone SE, iPad, and so on, or the desktop version as well. So it depends. So in this sample project, I've used the iPhone 10 as the screen. Once you select this, it gives you the dimensions, the X, W, and the Y as well, or the angles as well, all right? So X, Y, the width, height, and of course, the angles of rotation. The background of this, since I already have an image background, by default, it's the white background. The instance is iPhone X, layout grid. I'll explain all of these, so not to worry. Just kind of go through this and glimpse what these all mean, right? So what is a layout grid? Just understand and remember these terms at this point. I'll demonstrate each of these in subsequent lectures so you'll understand and also apply and take a look at how they work. So we have the fill, stroke, effects, and of course the export as well. So any object that you select, notice it'll give you the properties of all of these objects. Okay, great. The prototype, of course, if I select back my entire screen for iPhone X, the destination is either iPhone 10 or star, or depending on the objects that I have on this particular screen. And notice as soon as I hover over each one of these, if you notice on the left side of the screen, it also hovers of different objects, right? So these are basically my objects that I can select. And as far as code is concerned, let me select the object here, click on code. Notice it gives me the CSS code, which is the cascading style sheets. So this, the developer or the programmer or the coder can use to actually code using these CSS style sheets. So a very powerful element here. This gives you an idea of what the interface looks like. This is again the cloud version, right? The center tools that are displayed once I select the screen, right? So if I select any one of these because these are just duplicates or mirrored, notice a few additional tools appear. So one of them is of course crop image. The other one is Boolean groups. I can either do union groups or intersection groups and I'll talk about what those are later on. But you can do subtract, intersect, exclude, and so on. The next tool is use as a mask. So I can use various masks and layers. Some of you are familiar with these terms. If not, I'll talk about those. And components. This is one of the most powerful tools that I've come across using Figma, is creating components. Before I actually dive deeper into components in subsequent lectures, for now, component is simply, let's say you create an object in one screen. The same object is created on other screens. Okay, so the behavior and functionality of those objects can be changed altogether at once. So you don't have to actually go and select uh, different objects at different times and change the properties. If I change a property of one object, it changes the properties of all the rest of the objects. That's called components. We'll take a look at what that is. And of course, instances are just part of components. So if I create a component, there are multiple instances within the component. And I can edit the object as well. So if I click on, let's say, the getting started, click on edit object, I can simply edit objects and so on. And notice both of these objects change on both screens because this is part of the component. All right, great. So this gives you a flavor of what the interface tool looks like for Figma. Next, let me show you the desktop version. Remember your homework? So I'm going to show you the desktop version. It's much easier to work with a desktop version, and I'm going to show you the subtle difference as well between the online version of Figma and the desktop. So let me go ahead and switch to my desktop app. Okay, let me go ahead and click on the desktop app. So, and this is what it looks like. So once you download, install, and open it, notice this is what it is going to look like. Very similar to the actual cloud version. And the good thing about this is everything is synced. So whatever you change using your browser online, 
automatically changes in the desktop app. So once I have the desktop app open, I can click on the same project called Claydesk. And notice it brings me to a similar screen, exactly the same screen rather. The only difference here is up on the menu, there's an additional menu on top. So here you can actually use this menu to select these options. You could of course also use the same menu here, which is the same menu, right? So the text menu here is the same text menu up on top. There we go, okay? So depends on how you wish to work. Sometimes your internet connection is slow, so you may wanna use the desktop version when you design these apps. So in this lesson, let's recap. I just wanted to give you a flavor or introduction to the Figma interface, what it looks like. And with this kind of practice, I've assigned a homework for you. You have to download the desktop app, open it up, so you can practice with this particular lecture. So with this, let's move to the next lesson.